Okay, welcome back to our next lesson. We are looking at checking on validity for our um, statements to tell if something is valid. And we have two methods that we're going to use. In this particular lesson, we're going to look at what we call the bad row method and see how it's going to help us along with our truth tables. And that's where our rules are going to come in for that with our truth tables. So let's take a look there. Okay, we're on page 56 of our lesson notes. Again, we are looking at our first method here, looking at arguments, two types. We're looking at our bad row method which we're looking for a specific pattern, call it TTF. So true, true, false is what we're looking at. Then in our next one, we'll look at our Euler circles for our quantified statements. Okay, let's take a look here. So suppose we have the following argument. When we have an argument, an argument consists of two premises and a conclusion. So you have premise one, that's just your first statement. Premise two, a second statement, and then the conclusion statement. Now the long way that we would do this would be to write out each of our premises in symbolic form. We're still going to do this now, okay? And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to get that done. So first things first, you would take and write all of your premises out. So it says, if the cat is blue, then the dog is green. You see that this is a conditional statement. So we have, if the cat is blue, so I'm gonna let this be my P. So we have P, then the dog is blue, apply as Q. Okay, so our conditional statement, P, apply as Q. My second premise says, the dog is not green. So remember, this was my P, this is my Q. The dog is not green, then that's negation Q, right? So my second premise is negation Q. My conclusion says therefore, and to represent therefore, we usually you'll see this triangular shape dots. That means therefore, so you don't have to write the word out. Okay, so you'll see them write, therefore, therefore, my conclusion says, the cat is not blue. Well, P is the cat is blue, so the cat is not blue would be negation P. Okay, so here we are, we finished writing our simple, um, our premises out in symbolic form. Then, in order to find out if it is valid, what we would do is we would take the and statements of premise one and premise two, we take premise one and premise two and write them in and statements, and then it would imply my conclusion. And then I would put it in to this truth table. And then I would then fill in the truth table, okay? and then fill it out. But that was so long, okay? So what you would do is see if the outcome is always true. So in other words, you would look for the tautology. Remember I mentioned that before, that if all of your um, outcomes in your conclusion, uh, if all of your outcomes are T's or, or all true, then you would have a tautology. So in order to tell us something is valid, after you finish filling in this truth table, if all of this column was T's, then your statement would be valid. If it was something else, I mean, if there's just one F in there, then it wouldn't be valid, right? But that was a long way. So we're not gonna go that route. In the notes, we kind of went through and we found out that this was a valid statement but you won't have to go through this long way. We're gonna take the shortcut 
And our short way is going to be called the bad row method. So I'm not going to go ahead and fill this in. We know that it's valid because all of these are going to be T's. All right, which means that it's a tautology. So remembering that. We knew it was gonna be true or it was gonna be valid here in this case because it was always true. Always true means that you have tautology. The tautology always means valid, okay? but we wanna make our work short. So hence comes the bad row method. Now, what is the bad row method? The bad row method is a simple and shorter way of telling if something is valid or invalid by using your truth table. We're gonna be looking for a specific pattern and that pattern is T, T, F. Means true, true, false. If you have this bad row, all right, that means that your first premise is true, your second premise is true, but it leads to a false conclusion. If this pattern should fall anytime in your truth table, then it's not valid. But if it never shows up, it's valid, okay? We don't even have to do all of the truth table. That's the beauty of this thing. If you know you're looking for this pattern, then you don't even have to fill in the whole entire table. So it cuts our work down tremendously. Let's see how we're gonna do it. Okay? So remember up here, we wrote our premises out, premise one, premise two, and our conclusion. You're gonna bring it down here. You build your truth table by premise one, premise two, and your conclusion. So your first row is premise one, second row, premise two, your last row, always your conclusion. All right? Then we want to fill in the table. Now, this is a small table. So let's go ahead and do the whole thing. We can get ourselves warmed up. And then when we get to the next one, we'll see how we won't have to do the whole table. So we have P implies Q. So we know the conditional statement is false only when we have the broken promise. So here we have T to F. That's our broken promise right there is F. So we know that all of these other ones have to be T. Then we can negate our Q. Our Q, we're negating it. We get F, T, F, T. Negating our P. Okay, so we're neg negating P, so we get F, F, T, and T. So now we filled in our truth table. So we are looking to see if this pattern emerged amongst our truth table. Do we have a T, a T that leads to an F? And I don't see one. I see T, T, T. I see T, F. F, T, T, F. So no, this pattern right here does not show up, okay? So our question for ourselves. Do we see the pattern TTF, okay, in our rows? And what's our row? Here we have row three, row four, and row five, right? Do we see that pattern emerge? No, we don't, okay? And since we don't,
since the pattern is not there, the argument is valid. Okay. If it had appeared, our argument would not be valid. All right. But it's valid. That's simple as that. We're looking for this pattern to come out. If it comes out, not valid. And only it has to appear once. It may appear three times, four times, but it only needs to appear one time for it not to be valid. If it doesn't appear at all, valid. All right, let's give it a shot. So here's our next one. Let's take a look. So we're gonna use the bad row approach to show why each argument is valid or show that it's invalid. It says, today is Sunday and I am not tired. If my cat is happy, then it is Sunday. Therefore, Sunday is not, uh, today is not Sunday and my cat is happy, All right? So there's my statements. Premise one, today is Sunday and I am not happy. Let's make this our P and this is our Q. It's an and statement. So we have P and Q. Our second statement says, if my cat is happy, then it is Sunday. My cat is happy. We haven't seen that before. So this must be our R. Then we have, it is Sunday, right? So we know that today is Sunday is P. Now remember, so if then, so we have R implies P. Therefore, today is not Sunday. So we know that today is Sunday is P. So that today is not Sunday is negation P. And my cat is happy. Now my cat is happy was R. Okay. We have our two premises and our conclusion. All right, so this is step one. Step two, fill in at the top of your table. Now, you know, because we have a P, Q, and an R, we're gonna have our three simple statements here, which is gonna give us our eight cases, right? So our first four are true, second four are false. Then we have alternating by twos, true, false, true, false. Then alternating by ones, true, false, true, false, and so forth. So you got eight cases. So step two. Fill in the headers of your columns. Now, very simple. You have P1, P2, and then your conclusion. So again, you're gonna have P1, P2, and your conclusion. So you got P and Q. R implies P, and then you have negation P, and R, 
right? So we got step two down. Here we are with step three, fill in the columns. Now, a lot of ways you can do this. Some people start with the conclusion and work your way backwards. Here, I see that my conclusion is negation P and R. But my P1, my, my first column here, column four, seems simple. It's an and statement, pretty simple to fill in. I'm going to start with that column, and I'm going to see which ones will give me T's. Because I know the pattern I'm looking for is T, T, F. So if I get an F in this column, I don't even have to worry about filling out these other columns because it won't fit this pattern ever. So if I get a T here, that's what I'm concerned about because then I have the potential of getting another T here, which will lead to an F, okay? So I'm going to say, Step three, start filling in um, a column. easiest to you. Now this is a little different from the class notes, from the annotated notes, because there's so many ways that you can approach it. I think you should approach it whatever feels comfortable in your spirit, okay? So column one feels good in my spirit because it's an easy find. All right, so let's find it. P and Q. And is true only when both cases are true. Very easy find, right? So we have two T's here. I know that's a T. This is two T's, that's a T. Then you have no, no two T's, no two T's, mm -mm, no and no. Look at that. So all these other cases, we had a total of eight cases. When I filled in this first column, the only two that I have to worry about are the first two. These other ones here, I can cross them off. I'm crossing these off because they're going to give me Fs. I don't even have to worry about anything above. You see that? I just got rid of a whole lot of work. If we did it that first method, we'd have to fill in the whole entire table and everything and actually have more columns. We don't want that. We don't want more work. So now I only need to focus on these two cases up here. So now let's go ahead and find R implies P and see if we get a T here. If we get a T here, then we have a potential of getting that pattern of TTF. So let's see, R implies P. Now remember, this is our condi conditional statement, so order matters. So I need to look at R first, then go to P. Now I'm looking for the broken promise. And that gives me F when we go from T to F. So I'm looking from R to P. So R is, I'm looking from T to F. No, T to F. Both of them are T's. Uh oh, looks like I might be following a pattern. You see it? T, 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 T. Now we got to see if we're going to get an F here. All right, let's see it. We need negation P. And we haven't found that yet. So we need to do that. So negation P would be F and F. Keep that in mind. And we need the and for R. Let's see, joining it with R. Now if that's and. We know and is true only when both cases are true. And we just find out we have negation P, right, which is an F. And then we're going to and with R. Does it even matter? Because these are now Fs. 
So F and something is still going to be an F. So these are going to be Fs right here. Do we see that? We got bad row. Not only do we have one of them, we got two of them. So right there. Two bad rows. All right. So the bad row shows up. So step three, we started filling in our columns that seem easiest to us, looking for our pattern. And then step four, we got rid of columns or rows that we didn't need. So we, let's see. rid of rows you don't need. We did. We didn't need these rows. We didn't need to do them. All right. And then if you step five. If you find a TTF pattern, then invalid. If you do not, valid. Very simple. So we found out we had two bad rows. So this argument is invalid. Okay. I hope this is clear. We don't have to do the whole table. But now, if it makes you feel better to do the whole table, and then look for your pattern, do it, okay? You don't have to do this method as long as you get the concept. The concept is being able to use the rules to fill in the truth table so you can see if the pattern emerges, okay? But if you know what the pattern is and what you're looking for, and one thing, it doesn't fall into that pattern, you could just 86 that row. You don't even have to look at it anymore, right? Okay, so let's see if we can follow the gist of what we're doing, you can pause the tape right here and try B and see what happens. And then we'll come back and take a look. All right, so we're back now. We are walking through the steps. Remember, you gotta change the words to symbol now. So it says, the bug is dead or the bird is white. The bug is not dead. Therefore, the bug is not white. So here we are. The bug is dead. That's our P. Or the bird is white. So we have P or Q. Okay. Then it says the bug is not dead. Well, the bug is dead is P. So the bug is not dead must be not P. Therefore, the bird, right, is not white. So the bird is not white would be negation Q. Okay. All right. So now that we've got our transition from our words to our letters, putting them into the column for our headers, so we have P or Q. Negation, P, negation, Q. All right, so now we've got that label. Now we can go ahead and fill in. So now 
when I look at this, I'm going to start from the back. So I want to show us the variations of how we can do this. So I can hit everybody, make sure that everybody can understand that you have your own options and some variations. So I'm going to start with the conclusion column. So we see it's just negation Q. And I'm going to focus only on the column that is going to give me the result of an F. Why? Because that's the pattern I'm looking for. I'm looking for T, T, F. So I'm looking if there's any one of these cases that's going to have an F to result in it. So negation Q. Here's my Q column. I can only get an F when I negate it here, that first one, and here, the third one. You see here, this would give me a T, and I would get a T here. I don't need to do those because it won't follow the pattern. And I'm specifically looking for this pattern. So I'm just going to cross out those entire rows right there. So I don't even have to look at those anymore. I'm going to walk backwards. Now, I got my two possible cases that might result in a TTF. I'm going to go ahead and get this negation P because that's the easier one. Negation P, I'm going to see if either one of these cases is going to give me a T. So here's negation P right here. That's going to give me an F, not a T. I'm going to cross it out. I don't even need to go any further with that one. It's not going to give me a T. Negation P here, that's the F. If I change the negation, it's going to give me a T. All right? This has the potential of being my pattern. Do you see it? Now I need to check this one. If this is the T, oh, I'm in trouble. It's not going to be valid. Okay? Let's see. P or Q. Now we know or is false only when both cases are false. So do we have that? No, we don't have that. So that means that this is true. Look at that. There's my pattern right there. I do happen to take, you know. So because I got that bad row right there, invalid. Do you see what I'm doing? Doesn't matter where you start, whether it's the beginning of the table or the end of the table. If you want to start with the middle column, okay? If you want to just stick with one way of doing it all the time, do it. You want to fill in the whole table, do it, okay? But again, this is designed for you to cut your work in half so you don't have to do all the table. All right, let's try this one more. All right, so one more. It says my dog is green. Then if my dog is green, then my cat is purple. If my cat is purple, then my ferret is yellow. Therefore, if my ferret is not yellow, then my dog is not green. They want to know if it's valid or invalid. You can pause the table right, uh, tape right here and then see what happens. See what you can get and then we'll come back. All right, so now we can trans transition our sentences our into syllables or symbols here. So we got, if my dog is green, then my cat is purple. So let's let this be P and my cat is purple is Q. All right, so we have an if then statement, P implies Q. If my cat is purple, my cat is purple is Q. So if my cat is purple, that would be Q. Then my ferret is yellow. We haven't talked about a ferret yet, so I need to incorporate a new letter, R. Okay. Therefore, if my ferret is not yellow. So if my ferret is not yellow, then that would be Negation R implies, right? K. 
cat and hmm? oh I didn't write my stuff over here so Q implies R so then this is negation R implies then my dog is not green so remember the dog my dog is green is P so my dog is not green is negation P so my conclusion therefore negation R implies negation P. All right. So now we our parts, we're plugging it in. This is our P implies Q. This is Q implies R. And then negation R implies negation P. All right, so you work it out. When I look at this, I got those negations in my column, my, my um, conclusion column. And then I got some simple stuff going on with column one or four and column five. So I feel kind of, you know, better in my spirit to start with column four and five and see what happens. So let's do that. Now you probably went a different way and it's okay. Just follow along to make sure your process is still good. So here we are with P implies Q. So again, the broken promise. So we know we're looking for T to F. That's gonna give us an F. Now, if we that happens and we don't want that, we don't want that row. So everything else we want is a T. All right, let's see what happens. So P to Q. So we want T to F. That's a T, let's go here. This is gonna be a T. This is gonna be F, so that's gone. That's gone. All right, so it looks like everything else is a T. All right. So we see that we don't have to worry about these two right there. All right, so now let's go to the second column. I know you finished it. It says Q implies R. So remember, we're going from Q to R, looking for, again, our broken promise is T to F is F. All right, so we know if F appears, we don't care about that row anymore, anymore at that point. So T to T is a T. T to F, we know it's an F. So I don't need to worry about that anymore. Okay, come on down here. T to T is T. T to F is F. So I don't need to worry about you. This is T. And this is T. Okay. How are we feeling? I'm cutting down. You see, cutting down my work. Don't have to do the whole table. All right. So now I need to check these one, two, three, four cases. You see them? One, two, three, four cases. So I got rid of four. I need to check the other four. See if an F appears in one of these. Now you see how I need a negation R and I need negation P. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the results of negation R on the right side here and negation P on the um, negation R on the left side here and negation P on the right. And then I'm going to write my answer in the middle. So that way I can bring it forward so we can kind of see it and not have to be bouncing back and forth. Now this is just an option just to kind of cut down on possible error that you're looking at the wrong columns, especially since we don't have an extra one for the negation of R or negation of P. Okay. All right, let's go for it. So negation R here, that would be an F. And negation P would be an F. Come down here, negation R would be an F, negation P would be a T. Then you have down here, um, negation R is an F, 
And down here, negation R is a T. All right. Now I need to get my negation P here. Negation P is a T. And negation P for this last one is a T. All right, so I filled in my negation R's and my negation P's. Now I can answer the question, which is negation R implies negation P. Now remember, I'm looking for an F. And that's going to simplify. Now I got T, T, F. All right, so we're looking for an F to P. Now remember, you only get an F with the broken promise, right? Broken promise is from T to F. So we know that's not going to happen here. Not going to happen here. Nope, no way. And no way. Didn't happen. So we do not have the pattern T, T, F up in here. Is everybody all right? It takes practice. So since we didn't get that TTF, then that means that this is valid. Okay. So how do we know? No. My B looks a little weird. No. I'm still weird. No bad row. Okay. So no bad row. Thus, that's how we got that. But if you look at my table, I didn't have to do all of it. So the bad row method cuts our work down practically in half. So we don't have to do all of the table because we're looking for that specific pattern, TTF, true, true to a false conclusion. Okay, if it appears, invalid. If it never shows up, we're good, it's valid. All right, okay. So go and practice this. It's gonna really help you out when you're checking on the validity of your statements. It's going to go really fast, help you um, to digest it and make sure you understand what's happening with the setup, the bad row method, and what you're actually saying about it, okay? And when we come back, we'll get that last lesson in, and then you'll, be, um, you'll understand with our quantify statements how we're using those circles, those Euler circles, to um, draw pictorial um, representations to show validity of our statements then. All right, good luck with everything, and I'll see you in the next lesson.